Hello everyone, Muckluck Douglas Bartholomew Reginald Esquire IV here, and this is a guide to the basics of PvP. Specifically, I'll be going over the Conquest game mode that includes ranked play, but I will touch on Stronghold and the 2v2 game modes as well. Again, this guide is meant to show you the basics of PvP. We're going to teach you all the basic concepts to give you a stronger start and make sure you understand what is going on in the match. First off, why PvP? Primarily for fun. PvP is played 5v5 and allows you to test your skills and builds against other players. It is also fairly profitable, you can get legendary armor from it, as well as the only legendary amulet in the game if you wish to work towards that goal. If you are interested in working toward creating legendary armor through PvP, I will have a link for that video in the description. Getting started. To get started in PvP, there is a long and challenging process you must accomplish to prove yourself worthy of stepping into the arena. I am going to show you that process now. When in the lobby or PvP, you are temporarily max level. All skills, specializations that your account has access to, and traits are unlocked, so if you have Path of Fire and you are a Ranger, you will have access to Druid and Soul Beast, even if you are on a level 2 Ranger that has not unlocked them yet. When you leave PvP, you will revert to normal. This means if you want to PvP on a character you don't want to level, you don't have to. Click the helmet near the top of the screen to open your PvP hero panel. You can toggle between panels with this button here. In PvP, your real gear doesn't matter, but you need to make sure you have items equipped. If you are on a brand new character, you can buy armor pieces as well as weapon types from these merchants by the market waypoint. Once you have weapons in hand, click the amulet slot. The amulet simulates a full set of equipment stats. You can pick the one you want for your build here. More on builds later, we will come back to that. Certain stat combinations have been removed from ranked PvP because they made characters unkillable or other such nonsense, so you may notice that some stat combinations aren't on the list. Next, click the rune. The rune simulates having a full 6-piece rune bonus on your gear. Certain ones are locked at the bottom of the list, but can be unlocked by paying a small gold fee if you wish. Then click the sigils next to your weapons and select whatever you like. Again, certain ones were removed that were deemed unfair. Next, you want to go to the build tab on the left, select the specializations and traits you want to try out in PvP, as well as your skills. If you are a ranger, you will have access to all pets in-game for fairness while in here, even if you don't have them unlocked yet. Select those as well. The build as a whole. When starting off, if you have an idea you want to try, go ahead and plug that in. If you prefer, you can visit well-known websites where people share their builds and copy one of those. This has the advantage of letting you worry about whether you are playing the build correctly versus is this build terrible, while you are learning the basics. I will say, however, there is nothing quite so satisfying as making up something new and having it work and having no one else know what the heck you're doing. Two websites I know of that are popular for getting PvP builds from are metabattle.com and godsofpvp.net if you wish to use them. I will put link to those in the description. A couple of staples that every PvP build should have is a stun break, that is a move that gets you out of crowd control, and a condition cleanse. Many classes will try to kill you with bleeds, burns, and poisons. If you don't have a way of removing them, it will make you an easy kill to those targets. The Lobby and its other resources. The PvP lobby has everything you need to get started. First, we'll start near those merchants that we visited for weapons and armor at the market waypoint. If I made a new necromancer and came here at level 2 with only an axe, I could buy a staff, scepter, or whatever, with a few coins and armor for my other slots at this location. These merchants sell items related to making ascended and legendary equipment. Not something you will need right away, but good to know where they are. There's a bank, trading post, and other standard services nearby, easily identifiable on the map. The arena vendor allows you to buy a custom arena. You might love custom arenas or find that you never care about them. I think I've used them twice in my time in the game, but again, it's good to know where it is. Follow the path south and we can see statues of previous high-ranking players to the right and a portal to Lion's Arch over to the left. This is actually very useful for new characters. You can port to the PvP lobby, then port to Lion's Arch if you need to go there. The Arena Waypoint. The Arena is a free-for-all PvP pit. Bloodthirsty combatants often spend time here while waiting on their next match queue to pop. There are a couple of unspoken rules in the Arena, such as if two people are fighting a duel, go find someone else to fight, unless one of the two owes you money. If you want to leave the Arena, you can use the special action key to defeat yourself and respawn back up top. 
the training areas. Here there is an assortment of NPC opponents, golems, and siege equipment. Some golems are meant to test your damage on, some your dodge skills. The NPC opponents can give you an elementary taste of what fighting certain classes will be like. At the south end of the training area is a lord, which is on certain maps in PvP. Some builds can confidently solo the lord, others cannot. You can see how you would fare here. Note, the Lord must be executed like a player once they are knocked into downstate. This means that certain classes on the Lord's team can revive the Lord to try and save him. Finally, there is the siege equipment. Some of the maps I will show you have trebuchets. You should try firing one if you haven't ever used one before while you are here. Lastly in the lobby is the Champion's Rest, a small VIP lounge for the winners of major tournaments. Let's look at the PvP panel and see what these buttons do. The first tab has our Enter and Leave Lobby button. We can queue for Ranked or Unranked Combat. Ranked will unlock after PvP level 20, which is acquired by playing Unranked. Your PvP experience bar is located here. This is the bar that needs to hit level 20 to unlock Ranked Play. Every time it levels up, you get a treasure chest. You can scroll down and see your recent match history and lots of other stats. The League tab. Here you can see what league you are in, from Bronze, Silver, Gold, Platinum, or Legendary. This is for the ranked game mode. At the bottom of the screen is a chest with pips. Each season, these chests reset. You earn them just by playing ranked games. You earn more pips by winning than losing, but either way, you will progress with every game you play. The chests give you PvP League tickets, which are used for things like legendary crafting, and the final chest becomes repeatable after you've earned it once. Every time you get the final chest, you get 20 gold. Tournament tab. Use to queue for the daily automated tournaments. You need a team to queue for this. You need to queue with a group of five people. When you enter a tournament, you will play a specified number of rounds shown in the description. The prizes are given out based on which team had the best score from all three rounds. Let's say you queued for Lysa's Legions and you lost all three games, but there were only eight teams playing. You could still get a mystic coin and 10 gold per person, even if you were in eighth place in that scenario. Reward track tab. The reward track moves in unranked or ranked games. Similar to what I said in the World v. World Guide, any reward tracks that are not repeatable are generally much more profitable. Be sure to get those done. After that, pick whatever one you like. You also get mystic clovers from many of these tracks, which help you with legendary crafting. Miss Champions tab. The Miss Champions are a mechanic only used in the Stronghold game mode. I'll go into more details later, but basically whenever you summon a champion NPC in that game mode, whatever champion you have selected here is the one who appears. Can I interest you in an apple? And finally, the Game Browser tab. Here you can play custom games against other people, or when someone childishly shrieks at you to 1v1 them, you can use one of these rooms to do so if you fancy. Scoreboard. In the control options, make sure you have a hotkey for scoreboard. We will be using that later. Conquest map mechanics. Okay, now that we've taken a world tour of the PvP interface and lobby, let's talk about how to win this thing. The most common game mode played in PvP is Conquest. That is played 5v5, it has the ranked seasons, and can be played unranked at any time, whether in a season or not. When you queue for PvP and the queue pops up that it's time to play, everyone gets to vote on three of these maps, picked at random. After the votes, a spinner type effect will happen, picking one of them. There are many Conquest maps which each have a unique mechanic, but they all share the following rules. First team to 500 points wins. There are three nodes on the map, often referred to as Home, the one nearest your respawn, Mid, and Far, the one nearest the enemy respawn. Standing on a node while no enemies are standing on it will slowly capture the node. It takes about 5 seconds to decapture an enemy node, which makes it neutral again, and about 15 seconds to capture it from neutral to yours. Once a node is yours, it gives one point every two seconds. Killing an enemy player is worth five points. If the timer runs out, whichever team with more points wins at that time. As mentioned before, in addition to points from nodes and points from kills, there is one additional objective unique to each map. Specific Map Mechanics Battle of Kylo. Battle of Kylo's unique thing is a trebuchet. A player can use the trebuchet to shoot anywhere on the map. Usually this is used to blast a point that both teams are fighting on. The enemy team will hear incoming enemy fire in a massive red circle. If it hits them, it does heavy damage and a knockback. You can destroy the enemy trebuchet by attacking it, and occasionally trebuchet repair kits will spawn that you can use to fix it. Most often at high levels of play, the treb is rarely used. A skilled player can step out of the circle most of the time, 
And while someone is in the trebuchet, the rest of their team is fighting four versus five. Jin's Dominion. Jin's is a smaller map and occasionally has a genie lamp spawn in the middle. When the announcer says that it is open, you can interact with the lamp to enter it. Inside is a capture point. When you capture it, your entire team gets a special action key with one charge of a skill. These skills all have a cast time, a long wind-up, and various effects, such as a high damage meteor smashing down or removing all boons in an area. Again, at high levels of play, this mechanic is largely ignored. Having someone go stand in the lamp room gives your team a 4 versus 5 disadvantage, and the special ability is easily avoided with a few exceptions, such as if you've got one enemy down and you're dropping the meteor on their team while they're trying to revive them. Eternal Colosseum, a very popular map this is voted for often. The Colosseum occasionally spawns a sword and shield at the north and south end of the arena. If you pick it up, your entire team gets a small buff, offense for sword, defense for shield, and the person who picked it up gets a major buff and is clearly marked on the minimap. The sword holder deals much more damage and summons a reaper that attempts to execute anyone that they knock into downstate. The shield holder will be sturdier, and if they are downed before the shield wears off, they will be automatically revived one time. Forest of Niflhel. The forest map periodically spawns Sfanir and the Chieftain, aka the Beasts, near the two side nodes. Whoever gets the last hit on killing a beast, so it is stealable, gets 25 points for their team. Similar to my earlier comment on the lords, not every build can kill the beast quickly, and you should not go for them if it takes you a long time to kill them. Additionally, be careful about going for them and leaving your team to lose somewhere else. Look for an opportunity to do so with low risk. You don't want to run over to the beast and then have the enemy cap your points while you're not there. Legacy of the Faux Fire. This map has a lord. He has a few guards and is behind gates. If the enemy hits your gates, you will hear, your base is under attack. If they are on your lord, you will hear, your lord is under attack. Against some opponents, you can just hit the gate one time on the way past to mess with them and make them return to their base while your allies cap other points on the map. Fighting the lord plus his guards is something not every build can do. Plus, consider you are right by the enemy's respawn and they will try to stop you. However, if you can kill the lord, you earn 150 points. In most games on this map, teams often win just by holding two nodes until they have a big lead and the lords aren't even a factor. But you will see an unexpected lord kill swing some games. Revenge of the Capricorn. There's a ship pulling into the harbor. It's a Capricorn! A larger map, the Capricorn's unique mechanic spawns a fourth node to capture between the two side nodes. Whichever team captures it earns 25 points plus however many points they got the last time they capped it. So if you let the enemy cap it three times, they will get 25, 50, and 75 points. Skyhammer. As a ranger main, this is the only map I don't like. The map is filled with jump pads, which are very quirky, with pets, clones, and minions, hence my distaste. Periodically, the sky hammer will be charged and a portal near the middle will open. Everyone who steps through will teleport to a flying platform with a capture point. Whichever team captures it will fire the sky hammer. It will resemble a satellite laser attack on all three points on the map. It will fire two times, doing massive damage to enemies within it and decapping all enemy points, making them neutral. If the point was already yours, it just does the big damage effect. Temple of the Silent Storm. This is the map that gives the losing team the highest chance of making a comeback. Don't give up. There are two objectives on this map, sometimes called upper and lower. One spawns on the ground level and the other in an underground cave. The upper objective is called stillness, and if you pick it up, your team's income is doubled. So if you had two points captured, you will get points as if you had four points until stillness wears off, etc. The lower objective is called tranquility. If you get it successfully, it captures every point on the map. I've had games where we were 200 points behind or more, and we got both of these objectives, and it gave us the income for six nodes. For you Norns, that's three fingers on each of your hands put together. Spirit Watch. Spirit Watch is not in the map pool for ranked play, you will only see it in unranked. It is basically capture the flag. An orb spawns in the center periodically, and when you carry it, you can't use many of your abilities. If you successfully get the orb to a friendly point, you get 50 points. If you carry it to an enemy node, you get 25 points and you capture it immediately. Stronghold is an unranked only game mode where the winning condition is killing the enemy lord or having more points than the enemy when the timer runs out. 
You start off with some supply. When you leave the spawn area, drop down, you can spend it on one of two things, wall breakers or archers. You want to get wall breakers in the beginning. You can pick up more supply from the center of the map and bring it back, or from enemy players sometimes. The enemy will have two gates, each with some guards preventing passage to their lord. The guards will kill your wall breakers if you don't have someone escort them. Have a player kill the guards, wall breakers kill the gate, repeat until you reach the lord, kill the lord to win. If you get the last gate down, spawn archers with supply instead. There are trebuchets on this map as well that can be utilized if you wish. Finally, Mist Essence will occasionally spawn on the map. It is marked, clearly, on the map, and the announcer will be loud about it. If you pick it up, it will spawn the Mist Champion you had selected in the PvP lobby. Can I interest you in an apple? That champion will push straight toward the enemy Lord. It can attack gates. You can try to escort it for the win if the enemy is putting up a strong defense. 2v2 mode. At the time of making this guide, we just finished the first 2v2 ranked season. ArenaNet announced that we would have 2v2 ranked mini seasons in between the 5v5 ranked seasons. This gives you a chance to still work on getting ingredients from ranked that are required for legendaries even when the 5v5 ranked seasons aren't open. There are three 2v2 maps at this time, but there is no unique mechanics on each of these, so I won't go into detail on them. But you should keep this in mind. Class balance is very different in 2v2 and 5v5. Some classes that feel balanced for 5v5 are less than ideal, or sometimes terrifyingly good if you put them in 2v2. Roles. Most often at the start of a conquest match, one person will go to the home node to capture it, the other four will go to mid. Occasionally, you will have one go home, three go mid, and one person very confident in their 1v1 ability will go far. However, this results often in your team going 3v4 in the middle for a time. Your teammates need to be aware of this and be ready to fall back. Remember, a death gives the enemy five points. Don't die needlessly. The Bunker. A Bunker is someone who does low to medium damage, but is really hard to kill. That person may get on one of the nodes and just start planning out their retirement. Often, it can take multiple people to kill a Bunker, but that means you're losing elsewhere on the map. Remember, if you are 3v1ing the Bunker, then the enemy team is 4v2ing your allies somewhere else. The Support. Supports can work in Conquest, but the builds are different than PvE. Tempests and Firebrands are the most common ones to work very well. Brands put their bubbles out that stop projectiles, buff teammates, and heal, and Tempests can do similar while also repeatedly chilling enemies. The Thief, and also to a lesser extent, Roamers. There is no class more mobile in Conquest than a Thief. You can win games while simultaneously losing every team fight with a good Thief on your team. Here's the standard situation. Enemy caps their home node and then moves on. Your thief ports across the map, decaps the node in 5 seconds, and then leaves. Enemy goes back and captures it again, taking 15 seconds. As soon as they leave, your thief decaps it again and runs off making Zoidberg noises. If the enemy doesn't have a thief to counter your thief, they often have to have someone with lower mobility stay near that node. So when that happens, if your thief stops going for the node and just starts teamfighting, then you've got a 5v4 teamfight with your advantage and one paranoid opponent. The guy finally moves, thief goes in and decaps it again. Additionally, the thief can pop around the map and turn any 1v1 into a 2v1, then move on. Now I want to specify, anyone can plus one a fight or decap, but thieves are really good at it. I can't stress this enough. You are literally called a thief. The one thing you're famous for is stealing. Go steal some nodes. It's all you have. Duelist. Someone very confident in 1v1. They often go to the opponent's home node and try to kill or bully out their solo person. A side noder. Someone with good mobility and 1v1 potential. Some examples may be warriors or solvies, capable of repeatedly harassing and trying to steal side nodes through force rather than the thief's method of doing it through speed. Team fighters. Someone more adept in a team fight. Example, most necromancers fit very well here. Rotations. Let me give you an example of winning through rotations. Let's say your team is winning every team fight, but they're losing the game. Every time you conquer a point, you lose the other two. That's the other team rotating better than you. If you hear someone say, we need to rotate better, and they might not say it that nicely, 
That is what they're referring to, basically predicting and responding to the enemy. You might see an enemy far off who is running toward a node and it will take them 5 to 10 seconds to get there. Don't wait on them to get there before you respond. Get moving or start pinging for someone else to respond there ahead of time. Did you just want to fight? Don't keep two plus people nearby just to finish off one downed enemy. Have everyone except one healthy person on your team move on. Go to the next fight, cap another node. Have your last person there finish off the down state in most cases. Maximize your efficiency. Don't always fight to the death on a point. If you know you're going to lose and running is still an option, get out. Unless the game is going to end in seconds and you really need to hold that point a few more seconds. If you die and then they cap the point, then they just cap the point and got an extra five points from killing you. If you lose a 1v1 to someone at a side node and you feel there's a strong chance of them killing you if you fought again, don't go fight them again. Speak to the team. The rev shut me down hard. I'm going to join mid. Can someone else try side? Etc. Don't make the mistake of repeating the same failing action until it's too late to come back from it. Can I even tell you what the definition of insanity is? Bleeding out. When you downstate an enemy, you have a few choices. If you are close to death with no way of healing, you should finish them off ASAP. If they are on the point preventing you from capturing it, kill them. If they are not on the point, not a threat, and there's no enemies nearby to res them, consider letting them bleed out. Just slap them whenever they start to bandage and then just watch them suffer. I don't say this out of sadism, there is a reason. The moment they die, they start respawning. If you drag that time out, you increase how long they're not a threat on the map and they're not accomplishing anything. A few notes on this. Rangers have the highest chance of getting themselves back up with their pet's lick wound skill. Don't try to bleed out a ranger. If the enemy has any necromancers, guardians, or warriors with a banner ultimate, they can run in and res their ally with a single click. Don't try to bleed someone out in that scenario. Imagine you've just won a 1v1, you're bleeding out your opponent, an enemy guardian comes running in, click, reses his ally, and then it's two versus you. Man, wouldn't that feel stupid. Elementalists will frequently use their mist form to move from wherever you downed them, often onto the point if they are close enough to it. This allows them to decap while they're down. Keep an eye on them. Warriors can get themselves back up for a limited time with Vengeance, allowing them to play with an extra Mario life. If you aren't confident, you can kill the guy again, or survive 10 plus seconds of him wailing on you before his Vengeance runs out and his weak heart and shattered willpower buckle, then just kill him, don't try to drag it out. Scoreboard. Remember I mentioned the scoreboard hotkey earlier? You can use that at the beginning of a match to see the classes of both teams. Additionally, you can swap characters during the game lobby if you wish to do so. Example, oh, they have a Necro on their team. Guys, let's swap to Firebrand since it counters everything. No port spots. A no port spot is a spot where if a thief or other class tries to teleport to a certain location, the game says there is no path to that location and the teleport fails. In general, any location you cannot walk to and you have to hit the jump key to get there is often a no port spot. On top of hedges in the Colosseum, on boxes or planters in Capricorn, on the jump pads in the Skyhammer, etc. If you're having trouble with enemy pets or thieves appearing behind you and saying nothing personnel, kid, before they backstab you, jump around on no port spots while fighting. Multiple doors. Most maps have more than one door that exits the respawn. Rarely, you may encounter a team that shuts you down so hard they have some people waiting to kill you right outside of respawn. Take the other door. Look around. There's more than one door on most of the maps. Standardized character models. Some enemies might be hard to keep track of due to their character. For example, I play an Asura of the smallest possible size under the delusion it will make me harder to target. There is a setting you can change called standardized character models that allows you to view everyone as a human so that you never lose because you couldn't see the Asura behind the char, etc. if you wish to do so. Animations. One of the biggest things you can do to up your skill in PvP is learn what the other guy can do. Now that alone is a mountain of information, so you can approach this a few different ways. Every time you die to something you don't recognize, you can see the name of the skill in the combat log or on the cause of death. Then look it up with the slash wiki command and see what you're dealing with. You can make a tune for a class you don't know, enter the PvP lobby and start reading all the tooltips, weapon skills, etc. and delete it, and then move on to the next class to get some general ideas. 
When I first encountered the Hollowsmith's Prime Light Beam, I struggled with it. It always sent me flying. I now know that when the engineer takes a knee, the anthem is not playing, and a Kamehameha starts charging from his gun, I need to dodge to the side. I now know that this move is unblockable and it goes through walls and terrain. Overpowered. Many of my early deaths were from trying to step around a corner or block the shot using my block mechanic, neither of which work on that. Attitudes. A quote I've said many times on my stream is that 95% of the people I've met in Guild Wars 2 have been wonderful people, and the other 5% were in PvP. Please go unranked, you don't deserve to be in this ELO. Says the AFK. My one kill was a quarter of our team, and I was a third of our team's damage. Dude. You're AFK. Chat, I, I want to make something very clear to you guys. That guy did as much to contribute to our team as my mother who doesn't own Guild Wars. She lives across town. I'm not sure if her internet is up. She doesn't own a copy of the game. It doesn't have it installed. She did just as much for our team as this guy did. That's not to say that PvP players are mostly toxic, but that most of the toxic people I did happen to meet were playing PvP. My recommendation is twofold. Don't type in chat much, except maybe at the start to lay out a game plan, such as, hey, I'll get the home note. Communicate with the minimap. You can ping the map with shift left click. You can draw on the map with shift right click and drag the cursor to show where you are going or draw an arrow or a circle around a target. You can ping a specific target and put a big targeting ridicule on their head with control T. Make use of these tools, especially control T in a team fight to pick a focus fire target and you really don't have to talk that much at all in the chat box mid match. If you encounter someone who is toxic, just right click their name and click block. If you really think it's bad, you can report them. While on the report topic, you can report someone as idle if they stop playing, go AFK, go link dead, etc. If it's the first time it's happened, they won't be punished. If they make a habit of it, they probably will be. In closing, don't be afraid to fail. In PvE, you don't have to fully understand every other class. You do your job, you trust they do theirs, the boss dies. In PvP, you get more and more of an advantage the more knowledge you gain of other classes. There is much more to learn in PvP, but these are the basics I've learned and thought that these would be the most helpful things to share with newcomers. If you have any tips to share with others on PvP that I didn't list, please put them in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe if you would like to see more content. A special thank you to my newest Patreon supporters who help fund these videos. If you have any questions, you can leave a comment for me below the video, mail me in-game at muckluck.9082, or ask me live any evening on Twitch after 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Click the follow button there to be notified when I go live. That's it for today. Happy stomping! Do you like stuff? Do you like adorable? Do you live on Earth? Do you like adorable stuff brought to your door at your place of residence on Earth? Then wait no more, because Muck Merch is finally here. The shop no one asked for and no one deserved is now open. You can get stickers, mouse pads, t-shirts, re-shirts, hoodies, hood rees, muck mugs, what the muck mugs, and much more. Every item was possibly, maybe, probably not, but you can't prove it wasn't smithed by the last dwarven craftsman in the heat of a dying star. Click the link in the video description to get started.